It is March the 2nd and we are starting another vlog. Welcome. Alright, I have been working the whole morning. Um, I have my clothes on and we are going to go and pick up a package and then grab a few little groceries just to tie me over until like Saturday or Sunday. Cool. See you now. now. Okay, so I just went and collected my take-a-lot haul and I'm here with the patches. So here's the box. I honestly, so um, I have recently gotten bras installed in my, well, laid out in my garden. And look, the South African sun in summer is intense, so it's not doing that well. And we don't have irrigation, like, there's no pipes, like, tap set up in the garden, so I can't have a hose pipe. So I ordered a watering can to like assist with the watering process and I thought it would be bigger it's five liters but I mean I thought it would be bigger so we shall test it out I mean it looks nice what do you think okay so there's that then I just saw sunscreen and part of me wants to keep it for myself but then another part of me is like I don't think my sister has sunscreen so I'm gonna give this to her And then I ordered two new books, so Weapons of Map Destruction, uh, basically how big data increases inequality and threatens democracy. So I'm quite excited about that one. And then I also ordered Coin Bullshit, The Art of Data Skepticism, well The Art of Skepticism in a Data Driven World. I'm quite excited for that. And lastly, oh and it came to a little baggie that we can read, that's nice. That's very nice of them. Okay, and then lastly, I just ordered Patch's new dog food because you always want to eat more pellets, huh? Can't survive on meat alone. No, oh, not like that luxurious. Not that luxurious. Okay. Well, let's get back to work. Yo, you can take the photo. Relates to all my previous non-meetings from my childhood. I wanted to talk about running a book club and a data science club in Cape Town. So I run Cape Town Bookology and Cape Town Data Dragons. Um, well, just the Data Dragons, really. And I run them both via Meetup, which is a paid fl platform, which where basically I pay to run these two organizations and then I have them on a monthly or bi weekly occurrence depending on the group. Okay, so in terms of the book club, it is. It probably sounds like not that much work, but in reality, you have to research topics. You have to research books that could potentially go for the topics because occasionally people have like, uh, occasionally the themes can be a bit confusing. And in terms of the themes, uh, you, each one, each month obviously has to be different. And when you are choosing one, for example, this past month's one was love and what is love and the pursuit the reality or the meaning of it, um, it forced me to read more than one book on that topic and to go and research philosophy and prevailing theories around it. So I was able to provide not just nuanced feedback to people when they discuss their own books and their own ideas, but also to be able to provide questions which would then tack on to their reading experience of it. So there's that as a nutshell. And then add to that, you also have to keep track of everyone who is going, organize the venue, which is normally a coffee shop or a restaurant, occasionally a wine farm, and then book the table, go there, make sure that you are early, reply to messages for people who are late or who decide to not come, and then collect uh, fees. Many meetups collect some sort of a nominal fee just to keep um, help support the organizer. So that way they can have some kind of a, that way the full price doesn't fall on that person. And then also just to be able to, you have to be quite well read yourself, which I mean, I do read a lot. And so where you are able to continually like say, oh yes, you read that. And in this book, I read that, that agrees or disagrees or offers this new insight. And what do you think of this? It's a continuous thing. So yeah, so it does take up quite a lot of time. Uh, fortunately, I have fantastic public libraries around me that I make use of quite a bit. Um, 
mainly because buying books and the rate that I would need to read them would be uh, extremely unaffordable. Books are very, very expensive. Um, yeah, and currently, the, well, it's not just my problem, it's a lot of meetup organizers' problems. A lot of people will RSVP to something, and then very few people will actually show up, regardless of whether it is an in person or an online event. And if it's online, they will show up at different times during the event. Like, you might say your event is going to start at six, and so then I, being me, with the respective of whether it's online or in person, I tend to wait for a good few minutes afterwards before I get started. And some people will show up at six, some people will show up at like 6.15, some will show up at 6.30, and then some will show up like halfway through the thing, so it was going to end at 7.45, they'll show up at like 7 o'clock, um, which is not ideal. So that is an add piece of stress for all of the various organisers. But of course, that is part of managing the group. Um, yeah, so that's just there. And the reason, so as I've mentioned, I do themes. Um, I chose to go with the thing of themes instead of specific books because with a specific book, obviously you have to go and procure that book yourself. And by doing a theme instead of a specific book, you uh, not only have a wider range of books and authors' opinions and views on that specific topic, but you also have the opportunity to hear about books that you might otherwise never have read. Like, I'm not a huge fiction person, but I'm always interested to hear what people have picked up in fictional, from fictional categories that align to the theme. And I always enjoy hearing like the different authors' opinions or views on it. Um, yeah, and there are authors that I would never have picked up that I have found to be very interesting. Um, so yeah, so just to run around, I shall show you what I picked up today from the library. So this is my library hall for today, and obviously I had to go and donate some books as well. So I am going through a bit of a hard time emotionally. So I read, got this Alain de Baton, The Constellations of Philosophy, because I imagine that the philosophers have something to say on everything. Um, and it should prove quite interesting. And then I saw this recommended for my next month theme, which is it's a bit more complicated than that by Ben Goldecker. And he's basically gone and written, like debunked a lot of the science around um, medicine and just science in general, um, that will rather debunk the news reports on it or the, the, the conspiracy theories online. So that will be quite interesting to read. And then for my next month, the book club theme is reinvigoration or regeneration and the idea is really to look at life um partially inspired by lent really and that you know cycle from jesus being alive to him obviously culminating in the crucifixion and resurrection but it got me thinking about like cycles in life and you know birth to death and then i was trying to look for a book on it and oh, obviously the library is packed so bit of a struggle to find someone to assist me but then I ran randomly as I was leaving found this it was called Fight Night by Miriam Towes Toes Towes I don't know how to say it and um, she well this woman it basically follows the life of a, mo of a grandmother a mother who is pregnant with another child and then a teenage daughter who ends up getting schooled by the grandmother. And it's an interesting exploration, I imagine, of a grandmother who is nearing death and now takes charge of rearing this teenager and just how much can you impart on one person while they're still being themselves and being new life. Um, where does legacy begin and the end? And, you know, how do you carry on a generation? Interesting. But yes, I mean, reading is a big thing and it is a fantastic way to keep up with not just life, but to really, but to inoculate yourself against the dangers of not just, I don't want to say ignorance, but to inoculate yourself against the dangers of apathy or to be, have false beliefs and even to ideas that you used to think were real but are not. 
So at the moment I'm busy reading Charms, my current nighttime reading, and essentially it follows like the lives of David Cameron, Boris Johnson and his siblings, um, and a couple others of British politics, obviously, um, as as well as a few Americans and other countries who have attended Oxford and then basically got the Oxford treatment. Um, but it's not just the ones, it's a very small part of Oxford, obviously, it's the ones who came from really well-to-do schools such as Eton. And yeah, it, it's quite enlightening. Do I recommend running a book club? Yes and no. I have met people who I think I, I don't know how else I would have met such delightful characters. I've met psychiatrists and research scientists and, you know, uh, traveling, inter I mean, international students from universities I'm not attending. I've met um, divorcees. I've met uh, con social media strategists. You name it, so many different types of people. Um, I've met people who are now becoming grandparents for the first time in their life. Um, just like, it's as well as people who are just starting uh, their career in a new city. It's quite a diverse array and very much an intellectual crowd. Um, I have found them in my daily life. I'm normally surrounded by people who will give me Netflix recommendations, but not really book recommendations. So it was nice to be able to talk about books. Um, bookshops normally have people in them, but you're not normally going to talk to them. So it is it's been quite lovely to have that experience and uh, yeah it's, it's been really nice to be able to share these things and to be able to discuss you know new ideas more difficult topics um and to embrace these items and just also to interact with people from wide varieties of life and from other viewpoints. Uh, I've often been challenged and in the beginning it felt quite intimidating, I won't lie, because I had people who were much older than me um, attending or who people who were much more educated. Some of the people, quite a few of the people have had masters or even postgraduate, I mean, I'm sorry, or even PhDs. And then others were, you know, had had a lifetime's worth of reading behind them uh, or were just very successful at uh, speaking on their ideas and these are things that I have been working on obviously I'm busy yeah. with my postgraduate studies but these are just things that I'm continually impressed by with the way they conduct themselves and carry themselves and I hope that some of it is rubbing off but one never knows. But yeah, it's been, this has been it. I think the only difficult thing has been the attendance um, and trying to keep a cheery face even when it is upsetting to the other members of the group when they see that so many people have an RSVP, yes, and then they have not shown up. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you again for a video.